Hey everybody, Will Fix here. Got another video for you today. It's going to be some probably mostly speculation and opinion. Um, so you might want to hang on to your seats. I want to talk about universal basic income, uh, XRP, the uh, tokenization ID of IDs, ID tokenification, which is really the tokenization of human beings. Um, the controlling powers, ruling powers, kings, um, and wicked rulers in high places. And what about the end times? Is there any is there any way that any of this is correlated with biblical end time prophecies? What does it say about it? Um, we're involved with something that is uh, culminating towards the end that we might not all like. And we're making money in the process, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be an exciting talk. I know it's going to generate a a ton of conversation, so just bear with me as I share my opinion, and I'm going to give you the outline and just see what you think of what I have to say about this and how I see it. If you own crypto, you need a self-custody wallet. I've chosen the Decent Wallet after owning several different wallets. I believe you will like it too. Use the link in the description. Purchase from my site. It does help support the channel. I appreciate it. So in this outline, we'll first talk about universal basic income. Then we'll talk about the control factors that can happen for cryptocurrency. And we need to include artificial intelligence. We need to include AI. And then we're going to merge some of these. We'll, we'll exploit some of those pieces. Then we're going to merge these with some um, biblical texts and see, can it line up with some biblical prophetic messages that were given about end times? Can it line up? And will it line up? And is it lining up? So this will be some speculation, but it should be fun. So kick back. Let's go ahead and get started. Now all of us could use some more money. And so they've thrown some pilot tests out there and done some evaluations. And there's some very positive things about it. Look here, World Economic Forum. And we're not going to read the whole article, but we're just going to brief it. Does universal basic income work? These countries are putting it to the test. This is June 22, 2023 article. So in the article, it's talking about two trials of universal basic income have been launched in England. 30 people will receive $2,046 for two years. All right, so what else are they going to do? They're going to also... Um, they're talking about UBI helping vulnerable young people. Well, that sounds good. We don't want people out there vulnerable. We want to help people, don't we? Guaranteed income schemes tried and tested. With the rising influence of AI and automation in our jobs markets and a widening global wealth gap, guaranteed income schemes have been put forward as one part of the solution to growing inequality. Oh, we're going to make people equal. Doesn't that sound great? The most comprehensive system is known as universal basic income. The World Bank defines, the World Bank, hmm, defines UBI as follows. A program to be delivered in cash unconditionally and to everyone. Its design features, all in cash, no conditions, and no targeting, challenge current practices to varying degrees. The World Bank says only a handful of countries have uh, trialed UBI schemes and no country has one in place long term. So Finland gave it a shot and uh, they got an experiment going on and it, they say it benefits mental health. Well, we all want people to benefit, don't we, mentally? Uh, unemployed people were given payments of 620 a month as part of the UBI trial in Finland. In 2017-2018, there was 
no means testing and the payment continued even if the recipient subsequently got a job. Well, oh, that's awfully nice. People receiving the payments worked an average of 78 days between November 2017 and October 2018, six days more than those on unemployment uh, benefits. Okay, so then look here. In Finnish experiment, people on the basic income reported large and statistically significant improvements in key drivers of well-being. They're just trying to help us. So you have mental health went up, physical health improved, employment improved. Isn't that something? Just everything got better. 83% of the people on basic income and 76 of people not on it were free from mental health problems. Wow. So there was improvement. Now Alaska's annual payments for all. The U.S. state of Alaska has been running a form of guaranteed income since 1982. Every resident in the state, including children, receives an annual payment from the Alaska Permanent Fund, which draws its revenue from oil and mining leases. This means the payment varies depending on oil prices, but is normally between $1,000 and $2,000. The payment for 2021 was $1,114.00. But the oil price is surging. The dividend of the 2022 has gone up to $3,284. <coughs> Do we all want to move to Alaska and get a piece of that? So, you see here, World Economic Forum is saying, boy, it just makes everything better. Isn't that interesting? Now, here we can see it being tested in the United States. The Stanford Basic Income Lab and Center for Guaranteed Income Research have partnered to visualize, visualize data from evolutions of 30-plus guaranteed income pilots across the United States. New demonstrations are added as their data becomes available. So where have they tested this at? So here we got 8,495 total participants with spending data. Alexandria, Atlanta, Baltimore, Birmingham, Cambridge, Columbia, Durham, any of these near you? Gainesville, um, Ithaca, Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, um, Louisville, uh, Madison, Look at all these. Look at all these cities in the United States tested. Uh, just a little bit everywhere. One years, two years, three years. New York City up to a thousand a month. A lot of these Democratic areas probably. You know, Los Angeles County three years. Um, so so you see, so you see that this has really been tested. Sorry, my phone's going off. This is being tested all over the world and all over our country. So this is not just an idea that we've heard about. It's been tested, being tested for years. And, um, and isn't it interesting, right? Right around COVID time, some of this stuff started getting tested. Isn't that interesting? You know, we had this planned pandemic start <laughs> and uh, then we have uh, a lot of these different things being tested. Very interesting. Let's move on. Now, some people think the government is creating crisis. They may be. Did they create the weather? Did they create the storms? Were they able to target it like that? Did they bring a desired effect? There's a lot of conspiracies out there. You know, there's conspiracies about 9-11. There's conspiracies about, you know, the, the banking failures. And uh, there's conspiracies about everything. But if they're... Whether they're a conspiracy or they're just not wasting any crisis, it, the consensus is that through crisis, they will be able to alleviate the fears of the crisis by implementing things that we may not otherwise want because it'll be an emergency. So if we have a complete and total economic collapse and everybody's <coughs> excuse me, devastated, uh, there will be people wanting stimulus. Well, in 2019, wasn't there some stimulus used? Did you use any stimulus checks? They came to my house 
I'm, I went ahead and cashed them. There was nothing that I had to do. I didn't have to pay it back. I didn't have to agree to any terms. I didn't have any social scoring like China has. So, yeah, it was free money. It was free money. So we like free money, don't we? Well, it's easy to get addicted to free money, isn't it? But then, can the scenario change? If we're using CBDCs or we're using cryptocurrency and everybody's involved and we get everybody gets a FedNow account with cryptocurrency and we have a crisis and stimulus is needed and stimulus is delivered, it's easy to get people addicted to stimulus. Then you could slowly start changing the deal, couldn't you? Hmm. Did you know there's going on in the world today where there are countries that forbid you to buy and sell unless you use the new monetary system. Wow. So you can't do barter trade. You can't trade with the old money or somebody else's money. You have to convert over to the new payment system to be allowed to buy and sell. That's kind of shocking, isn't it? We've heard of that before, haven't we? Isn't there a biblical reference to that? Now, while we read this scripture, I'm going to add in just some thoughts, okay? I'm not saying that it's going to be this way because there's all kinds of ways scripture can be interpreted. I'm not a scholar. However, I can read and then I can suppose or fill in creatively, you know, in a creative fashion, what that could mean. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's just to go, hmm, you know, yeah, could be. And so this is what I would call a possibility that would fit as we read this. Okay. So, so just listen. Now you can disagree in the comments. You can give me your ideas in the comments. We need all the ideas in the world, you know, to, to see about figuring this out because as time progresses, the book of Revelation gets interpreted in different ways because we interpret it uh, from the knowledge that we have right now and things that we know right now going on in the world. So it ends up with a time bias stuck in it. So uh, this is just adding in today's time bias. So let's look and see uh, and see what it says. And I'm going to just add in just a few ideas. So then I saw a second beast. So there's two beasts. Coming out of the earth, it had two horns like a lamb. Many people say that the horns are additional leaders, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs, it was given the power to perform on behalf of the first beast. It deceived the inhabitants of the earth in order and ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast. Now listen to this. Who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath. So it didn't have breath, and then it was given breath to the image of the first beast. So, is it possible if breath was given to an image that the image was, well, what if it was AI? What if AI was given, and I know this is a stretch, but there was a clone of someone who lived and they merged information into a person um, that uh, didn't have the knowledge, but the knowledge of the first beast was put in it because knowledge, I mean, life was breath was giving to the image. So there's a couple ideas and some of it sounds kind of crazy, but was it a severed head from a sword that they somehow kept alive? And then they transplanted it and it was given breath. Or was it just purely an image? 
or the 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 uh, memory of an AI where actually AI intelligence was put in a human being and it became the embodiment of the AI. Aren't those possible? I mean, we got some bizarre statements here. You know, it says in order for them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived, the second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. So I could see where they're honoring some great AI that solved some fantastic problems. You know, um, another person is in power and you got the second beast that comes up and then they end up merging somehow AI with humanity. Is that possible? You know, is it possible that it gives them memories and decision-making abilities and then it, it's able to walk around? Well, this would be a person without a soul but could be possessed by a demon, could be possessed by the devil himself, I suppose. But it all forced the people, both great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their hands or, uh, uh, or on their foreheads. And there's some real interesting wording coming up here so that they were not able to buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. And I want you to listen to this. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. So was a declaration made on some kind of an AI um, life form, and then it's given the number of a man, in other words, given the right to be a human being? I don't know. That's just interesting wording to me for uh, it's the number of a man. So that's very particular phrasing there. That number is, of course, 666. So is it possible that in the end time AI is involved with the closing out of everything. Is it possible that if you don't use uh, blockchain technology, maybe blockchain technology is the way people will have to pay for everything, and maybe people are tokenized. You know, they're talking about tokenizing ID. Well, that's a very soft way of saying we're going to tokenize human beings. Because if your ID is tokenized, that is the proof that you are who you are. They're going to tokenize human beings. They're going to have, you're going to have, and, and I know it makes sense, but it also makes sense with this scripture right here too, doesn't it? So it makes sense because, you know, the, the age of man and secular humanism is kind of the point of what is happening in the book of Revelation, that everything they're doing without God. So without God, if you number man and you have a chip, and that could be your key to your car, to your door. That could be your money. You know, it, those chips can be supported by the chip fluctuation of your body temperature. So you don't even need to power it. So if that is your bank account, you can buy, you can sell. You know, it looks like security. Everybody knows who's here, who isn't. Well, what would spark that? Could it be that a tragedy will spark the idea that they need to count everybody? Well, we could bring in here the idea of the rapture of the church. We know there's scripture that says where there's two in the field, then one will be gone, right? We know there's scripture that says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that are alive will rise and be caught up with him to meet him in the air. So we know there's some kind of an event. If that event happens, it's going to freak the world out. If the world's freaked out and they need a way to figure out who's here, well, then tokenization can happen. Then that through that emergency, they could say, you have to be tokenized or receive your mark because we got to know who's here and who isn't. It is possible that all of this be networked together. And what are the beginning stages of this? Well, I love Elon Musk, but, you know, the guy that... Uh, the, the, the guy has come up with so many great ideas. It's easy for those ideas to be um, used for evil and not good, right? He's the very one warning people about artificial intelligence 
but he's also creating a robot army, right? <laughs> he's creating these robots, and it's fantastic technology. You look at it, it's amazing. You can, you're going to be able to buy one for around $20,000, and it can do tasks around the house. You could have it go, go get your mail. You could have it load the dishwasher. You know, you can you could have it doing basic tasks around the house or manual tasks, mow the grass with a push mower, you know. So there's a lot of fantastic things. But when you have this type of thing um, implemented, well, it also has fingers that can hold a machine gun. It can also hold a pistol. And people will like the idea of not putting, let's say they use them for the military, if not putting people at risk, but you can put robots at risk. As technology goes on, we already have chips implanted that help uh, people use parts of their body they couldn't before. Um, so we, we already have seen the integration of people and AI. And really, have you ever used AI in any way to help better say something, to tell a story, to do an outline, you know, to help you with content? We're already assisted by artificial intelligence and starting to lean upon it heavily. When the technology it, it, it accelerates, which it's been accelerating like crazy, it's not past the imagination to say, wow, we're going to have people that are modified. We're going to have modified people. Look at this. Now, in the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to do it, but nobody understood biology well enough. And nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither the Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. But soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. We humans should get used to the idea used that to. we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity. This will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life four billion years ago. For four billion years, Nothing fundamental changed in the basic rules of the game of life. All of life for four billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And at the same time, science may enable life after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. So after four billion years of organic life shaped by natural selection, we are entering the era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. So does the data about my DNA my brain, my body, my life, does it belong to me or to some corporation or to the government or perhaps to the human collective? Humans are now hackable animals. 
you know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Free will, that's over. That's over. Over. Today, we have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. Yeah, I mean, everything is being digitalized. Everything is being monitored. In this time of crisis, you have to follow science. It's often said that you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste <laughs> because a crisis is an opportunity oh, to man. also do re good reforms that in normal times people will never agree to. But in a crisis, you see we have no chance. So, 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 so let's do it. Vaccine won't help us go the to the The vaccine will <laughs> help us, of course. It will make things, you know, m more manageable. Surveillance, people could look back in a hundred years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin, which I think is maybe the most important development of the 21st century, is this ability to hack human beings, to go under the skin, collect biometric data, analyze it and understand people better than they understand themselves. This I believe is maybe the most important event of the 21st century. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. The difference of this fourth uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you if you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example. It's you who exactly. are changed, yeah. and of yeah. course this has a big impact on yeah. your identity. Yeah. And offer certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about. You yeah. know, when you, began to, when you began to do that kind of gene editing, some people worry that you are changing what it means to be human. It's, that's the problem. And, yeah. uh, I, it, uh, of course, the new uh, Industrial Revolution offers us many opportunities, but it raises many fold questions on the ethical, but even legal uh, implications. And we have to be prepared for it. And that's what we want to do in Davos next year. Talk about technology and how the ways it can be deployed, uh, you know, that contribute to growth rather than exacerbate unemployment. How will that implement itself? It's a big question mark because uh, there is a fear that uh, technology, robots, uh, just to take yeah. one yeah. You gain element. productivity from machines. Exactly. And it replaces maybe um, the workforce or jobs faster than we can replace them with new jobs. Uh, not everybody can be a robot polisher and so yes. on. So yes. there will be new jobs. Now, isn't it interesting? Many governments wanted to do it, but couldn't, is how he starts off that narrative that he, that he brings. Um, that's scary. You know, they, they speak as if we all want this. We all want to be genetically enhanced. We all want to be enhanced with artificial intelligence. Like, hey, bring on the chips, man. Stick them in our heads. I'm just showing you that the vision of today with AI and with uh, chips and with cryptocurrency brings a lot of control. Does that mean I think cryptocurrency is evil? No, it's a tool. Right now it's just a tool. But when it becomes a tool of control and directs the worship or admiration of something or someone that uh, is not God, then it suddenly becomes exquisitely, deeply evil. There is a wrestling of powers and principalities. There is a warfare that goes on all the time in the unseen world. The Bible says the unseen world is more real than the world you see. So I thought I would share this with you. It is interesting insight. And uh, please uh, share this. Like and subscribe, and um, look, I'll see you next video.